five minutes past eight we haven't all turned into robots on this Tuesday morning that uh, noise you heard was clearly some gremlins in the system and uh, we don't all sound like that James Trace is in studio he doesn't sound like a robot either good morning James <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't hear that by the way but the ad break was just uh, all sounded like a robot so it wasn't great mm. uh, how are you feeling you're, you're a couple of days out now has it all kind uh, of it definitely hurts but uh I think objectively you look at it and it was uh, it was an incredible final um, like talked about it hoping it lived up to the, the quality of players that hype, were going to be on yeah. the field and the hype and and, uh, and it really did I think there was like the, you know it was a lot of uh, of spice in the occasion the, the quality of, of rugby was off the charts and um, just unfortunately I think everyone would have enjoyed it unless you're a Lancer fan because we just come out the wrong side of it it's so funny because the margins are so tight like yeah, were you surprised by the tactics towards the end not to not to not go for the drop goal but I mean they had those number of minutes where they probably I'm sure prepped for that potential scenario where you're a point down or a couple of points down with a few minutes left but clearly they felt like they had the time to maybe wind down the clock a little bit and go for the try yeah, I, I back it 100%. And I think um, full credit to to both uh, to Josh and to um, to uh, the sub hooker for is Um He both like oh, like so Josh. It's championship minutes to win the European Cup, and he nails the throw top of the jump, and you know, and, and they get in within a few meters. And and listen, full, full credit to to La Rochelle, um, the defender for their lives, and and uh, you know there was even an opportunity down the short side with um, I think it was Baird and um, Gibson Park. But again, it's a, it's the attention to detail that um, the top teams have of the disruption, and it was skeleton in that rock, and it was taken. Uh, Johnson had to hit, had to hit the rock because he was counter rock and he was taking about three lads um, to stop him and, uh, and and that's the difference you know if he doesn't put that rock pressure on Jamson sees that uh, that blind side and, and it's a whole different kettle of fish and, and uh, you know in terms of the, the kick like there was a lot of time he could see spent uh, you know because there was a player leaving the field or whatever um, you, you could see Ross testing the wind um, and clearly he knows his own range he's kicked in that field um, I don't know how many games so um, back to decision 100% and uh, unfortunately it's one of those ones where if you score you're a genius and if you don't 20, 20. Yeah, yeah but um, listen full full credit to to La Rochelle they were showed incredible resilience uh, I think to to go 17 points down and, and without even throwing a shot in a final and um, just to keep their cool and and uh, it, and it really in those championship minutes at the end of the first half um, and in the last kind of 10 minutes of the of the, the end of the game to uh, to come up with two huge scores I think uh, showed the that's why they're uh, you know double champs. Mm. Are, are teams kind of. Um is it kind of part of the makeup of possibilities to do the drop goal now compared to other years where like the, you have so many bonus points now and it's it's kind of gone out of the game to a large extent <coughs> you think back to Michael Kiernan compared to now where like a drop of goal wins you the game whereas now it's like you rarely enough see it actually in games uh, yeah so like my, my take on, on the, the drop goal scenario was so it was never it, they were always they almost almost scored every single time they carried so mm. it wasn't as if you know okay let's keep we're not getting anywhere here just build it closer to the posts and we'll dink it over it was like every time they came open um, there was a big opportunity on on the blind side and they almost scored again so it was like almost you know you're in the moment you're, you're not uh, you're not thinking okay there was no moment where it was like okay we're not going to score here let's just set up the drop goal yeah. I never that just never happened and before you knew it the moment was gone and uh, you know like a couple of centimetres higher or lower in, in a clear out um, and it's a different story it's a scrum you know and, and I'd, I'd back back Lancer to score off that scrum um, and listen that's that's the you know fair play to them. You have to take your hat off to them. Like yeah. they were like under the pump, and uh, and they showed up, and it still wasn't done. They had two lineouts to nail both of those to the tail um, shows incredible bottle, and as well calling it to the tail when you know it's it's it, the game's on the line. You're winning by a point. It, you know you're twenty thirty meters out from your own line. 
and uh, there was air pressure there as well you know it was, it was uh, Ross Maloney was, was right up in the air so unless they were top of the jump mm. uh, they weren't winning the line out so um Ah, oh, listen. You just have to to admire their um, their steel and guts, and and um, and again, you know, I, I talked uh, before about and loads of people talk about nailing the basics, and that's it. It's like, you know, your your throwing, your lift, your jump, the timing, the call. Yeah. You know, at every level, you know that that's uh, that's applicable, and when it matters most. You got to nail it, and they did. Um, so fair play to them. Yeah, and that, as you say, that that try just poor half times felt like the turning point in some ways. That it just maybe gave La Rochelle a little bit of hope at half time, where they're only maybe nine points down. Um, like w- that that start by Leinster, <clears throat> like the, especially the Dan Sheehan try early on, uh, when you get get the seventeen nil. I heard yourself and Quinny chatting to John after the match in the Aviva, and like, was it just that Leinster were mentally exhausted at the the, the prospect of? Being so far ahead of La Rochelle that this this game is is not won, but Jesus, seventeen point lead has never been lost in a Heineken Champions Cup final. So was it a psychological thing that maybe they were thinking, okay, well, we've done a lot of the effort now, we can we can pull back a bit, or was it just a case of they were they were out in their feet because of the level of exhaustion it took to get to that lead? I I felt when both teams came out they were spent. I felt like it was yeah. such an intense first half uh, that both teams really looked tired. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that was, you know, it wasn't one been more tired. I think La Rochelle are an exceptional team. I think they were always going to have purple patches. Yeah. Um, and in fairness, you know, there was a lot of like really, really important turnovers. I think Charlie Natai at one point, you had uh, Dan Sheen in the corner. You had Josh Van de Fleer with multiple uh, kind of mall turnovers. Um, but they were relentless and coming back. Every time we cleared the ball, uh, they were, they were. We didn't, you know, they were putting kick pressure on. We weren't getting amazing exits. Then all of a sudden, we're back under the cosh again, and you're dealing with these like unbelievably big, uh, powerful ball carriers. And and that, you know, we we like all of us knew that was going to be the case. The answer would have known that was going to be the case. And uh, you know, they did a great job of uh, of. You know, starting the game and, and sucker punching them with with a few early tries, um, that were you know unbelievably well executed. But they were always going to have a period of scoring, and, and you know uh, the the frustrating part is you're the you know breath of wind or uh, you know a few inches off in a clear out or off of you know the yeah. champions and everyone's going on about how great you are. But again, it's like. I can't explain, uh, you know how 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 much I respect the how hard it would have been to go into that changing room after I'd like been uh, pummeled for the first kind of twenty minutes, um, you know, and they had two opportunities really, and they took both of them. Uh, you know, like Dante's first try was just like incredible like power of the man you know like uh, huge. He, absolutely huge and you got to give credit to Doolan as well like uh, he goes in scrum half and like that's not an easy scenario when you're on the right side of the pitch because you're most likely going to have to play open so you've got the opposition scrum half beside you and you're coming back this way yeah, yeah. so it's way more pressure than if you're on the other side at least you get to, to kind of hide behind the number eight and play out so like all these little things of like that's not just uh, you know an easy thing to do when it matters when the chips are down. Um, so you have to give full respect uh, to to all of the, the La Rochelle players when it came to execute little things that were even outside of their their job that, mm. that uh, they did it when it mattered. We we'll get into some of the intricacies of, of the performance, but there was so much like even after the match, the the different narratives off the pitch that had happened even at a half time uh, the reports that Sean O'Brien had been standing there kind of almost to, to block Ron Nagara's access to the referee like happened uh, apparently in, in, in the previous final last year you had Ron Nagara after the game saying that, you know La Rochelle retreated as the little team um, and then the pre-match toss incident I guess if you want to call it that as well so James Ryan accused of disrespecting La Rochelle during the coin toss so Gregory Aldred had said from the toss already we were not respected and that should not be done there are a lot of values in our club and respect is part of it and then Raj uh, backed that up and said yeah I got word of it down in the pitch obviously I have a close relationship with my captain a bizarre action when they were going for the toss I originally thought that <coughs> James Ryan had been accused of avoiding eye contact but then Aldred I think afterwards had said he had eyeballed him so he'd done the opposite and he'd <laughs> given him maybe too much eye contact but that, that sort of thing I guess is part and parcel of top level sport that 
maybe team you know players or captains are trying to get in each other's heads before a match it's it's marginal gain stuff I've never um, uh, I've never heard of anything like it before but um, listen it's how he felt so uh, yeah listen uh, that sort of stuff you know like at the end of the day it's all um it's all just lip service like the it's relevant at the end yeah like it's it's what happens on the field is is the main thing and and uh you know it's like it's it's exciting to talk about um <laughs> but you know it, it, in fairness all that mattered on the day was what happened on the field and and uh you know talking about James Ryan I thought for his uh 29 minutes that he played he was unbelievable you know he, 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 was he then? yeah he was he was big but he's a, he, you lose your captain you know if they lost uh Audrey, like he, yeah. it would have been a huge loss for them so there's no denying it but um I don't think th like it was a, as if Jenkins didn't do well when he came on. I thought thought he did decently well, but you know James is probably in the uh, in the form that he was when he burst onto the scene again. Um, except he's bulkier and he's more physical. Um, so it's just a shame that that he didn't get the opportunity to to see out the game. And like you never know, he he came up with a huge turnover uh, early on when. Um, just prior actually to Dante's try, um, La Rochelle have a, have a line out in the corner and, and set up a mall on Skelton. Um, and James uh, Ryan breaks through the, the front seam, comes up with a huge deal, and uh, unfortunately, we, we knock it on instead of exiting. Um, and they were the kind of the, the, the little things that, uh, that kind of helped or hurt us uh, in the end. Where it was every time we, we do something good, we'd follow with it with a, a mistake, not every time, but. Uh, you know, at, at a couple of important times, we come up with a huge turnover, um, and yeah, we, we'd follow it with a mistake, and, and you just can't keep giving the teams as good as uh, as La Rochelle access without they're they're going to score. Um, they they convert too many to to give them that sort of territory, and and uh, yeah, listen, as I said, Dylan did exceptionally well, and uh, like dealing with the pressure of of being nine and the pre or Jamson giving them mm. a bit uh, off the back of the scrum, and, and uh, Dante finishes it unbelievably well, and. Um, this and that's that's all she wrote. I don't want to dwell on the on the off pitch stuff, um, but it is an art, as you say, interesting to talk about, um, and, and and it, it leads us. It, it's it's stuff that we don't, as members of the public, even think about before the game because we're not involved in high level sport to that degree. So we don't see this sort of thing. And we don't think about it maybe to an extent. Um, but even the the, the comments from um Roger after the match that little team comment that I said um so he says I think we're in Lansdowne rugby club we couldn't get a room in this place it's disappointing on that front but we've got to accept that we're seen as the little team but that's about to change could can you what did you think of of Raj after the game talking about Leinster and the little team stuff and the the eyeballing and and the I guess the off pitch stuff that's how he feels clearly you know and um you know, Leinster were in the RDS because uh, it's the Aviva and the uh, EPRC who decide the post-match function stuff and uh, they wouldn't have had rooms big enough for either of them but um, like listen that's how he feels so like he's entitled to say what he wants to say and, and uh, he was clearly very uh, passionate about a few different things but I know from from, uh, from our end there, you know there were the championship team coming over here um there was no little team, like little and La Rochelle don't go in the same sentence, I don't think, mm. in a lot of people's minds. <laughs> but um, yeah, listen, that's, that's how he feels. And, and um, listen, he's the two-time champion now, so it's how he wants. Uh, where, where does he rank in terms of Irish coaches already and what he's achieved already? Like, Oh, he's, clearly he's an incredible coach and he was an incredible player as well. And, and um, like you can hear from the, the interviews post-game from the players that uh, like they're unbelievably bought into to the culture that he's... Uh, He's curated in in, in La Rochelle, so. Um, How difficult is that in a foreign country as well, where like it's not even your natural language that you're, you know, you're trying to see at half time. What do I say to these lads? <clears throat> I've no, I've, I've no experience in it, mm. but uh, f you know, I can imagine the um, all the different cultures, um, the different language, like so many th like variables there that would that would make it very, very, very difficult. So, like it's a testament to him and his coaching staff of, of what a job he's done. And um, I think you know even his um, he focuses on 
you know, you were talking to the French media back in French out of respect. It's it's uh, it's his attention to detail in those little things that I'd say um, would build kind of admiration and respect from from his player group. And, and the fact he clearly, you know, he really cares about them, and, and that's the sign of any good coach I've ever had. Is you know they actually it's not contrived like yeah exactly, yeah. and and you, you you feel that you, you know you know the difference between mm. um, a coach that actually you know you go to war for them, um, a coach that actually cares for you and. and gets the, the group galvanised and he's, he seems to have clearly done that um, we might touch on some of the, the positives I guess from, from Leinster's perspective which we should because as we say look this is this is sport and, and there was only a kick of the ball between the two teams at the end uh, same as last year you know, we could be talking so easily about Leinster being back to back Champions Cup champions um, the uh, guy at Ringrose at one point he's, he's, he's shouting breathe and you, you can quite clearly see it in the television and uh, Robbie Henshaw is probably one of Leinster's most impressive outlets at different points and I suppose the loss of him possibly impacted Ringrose as well so he, we're talking about the loss of, of James Ryan but Henshaw as well was, was so crucial to everything good that Leinster were doing yeah he was unbelievable like I think uh, I think it was Aldrich got him out of the match like uh, Satini like he probably had two of the biggest moments in the game um, that, that try before half time and the line break at the start of the second half that got them uh, like their momentum right back going again mm. for them you know that, that's kind of like when you've gone in for Leinster it was like they needed to score first and or needed to have the first kind of like big moment. Yeah. Um but Robbie and uh, like Dan Sheehan, uh Josh van der Fleer, like uh Caelan Doris, you could pick like five or six players on the on the Lens side that had like, you know, like nine out of ten, ten yeah. out of ten performances, but you had the same on, on the on the La Rochelle side and, and uh and they just, as I said, took took their opportunities very well, and and there was a you know a point in it at the end, and uh, yeah, just sickening to be on the on the wrong side of it. But on the flip side, what an amazing comeback, and and uh, they deserve all the plaudits they're getting. And even the the clever lineouts from Leinster's perspective as well, like that that as we mentioned the Danchi and try early on, just wrong footed La Rochelle straight away, and I think Raj even said after the match he said we would have been so proud of that try if it had been us that that had come up with that, you know. Yeah. Um, Andrew Goodman's fingerprints probably on top of a lot of those those things as well just there's little special teams moves I guess from Leinster in the match early on especially where like this is brilliant stuff yeah it's a combination of of uh, Ross Maloney um, it'd be Rob McBride it'd be Andrew Goodman mm. um, you know they'd all uh, have put their own flavour on, on different ideas and um, hash them all out and, and listen again it's it's, uh, it's executing it when it matters so uh, it was an incredible try and, and Jack Conan's timing going through and, and um yeah, Dan's he's uh, he's like a like a winger as well as a, a hooker in, in terms of his pace and his power. So um, I thought he finished his, his second try even better. Uh, like the pass from Gibson Parks, obviously unbelievable. Um, but he still has a lot to do there, and and he's got, he's got uh, I think it's Rule and and Audrey and Bougarie closing on him. <laughs> uh, you know, but the, the point being like they're quick guys to get to you, so you got to be quick to get to the line for the corner because they they've got the angle on you, and. Um, yeah, he just finished it, finished it unbelievably well, uh, and he's such an asset to have for for Leinster in Ireland. Um, having him, you know, on the edge, it's literally like having a giant winger. Could he could he change like how young people look at you know? Could I end up in this position? Because look at him, like I mean, I don't know, if you, I don't know if you could end up there. <laughs> <laughs> Not me or you, Johnny. But Royal like. we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mad though. Like it's like he's so quick. Like it's like. Yeah, and like so, in terms of like numbers, he'd be probably in the, like the top like six percent of the group, wow. uh, including backs of, yeah. of of pace. So you're talking like proper proper top end speed. Um, but yeah, listen, I, I, uh, from from when I even started the game and. Uh, to now is like the the kids coming out of out of uh, rugby clubs and out of school are just at a different level because the the emphasis and the pathway of, of what it takes to to uh, become a pro and and the the extra work you have to do and all the different things and also the environment it's like the kids are just getting better so they're just making yeah. other kids better around yeah. them um, but to to answer the the hooker question like it takes all sorts you know like the um, Dan's a certain type of hooker Ron's a certain type of hooker like Booger eats a certain type of hooker mm. um, it's whatever kind of strengths you can bring to the game and, and uh, 
you know like it's, and then if you suit whatever way the team plays but um yeah we're just lucky to to have kind of two you know they're they're both very good probably uh a little bit different in in what they're good at so like that's great to have those options for for Leinster and um yeah like and Ireland as well mm. Leinster will obviously be hurting in the group um <clears throat> not just from last year but from this as well and, and the nature of the defeats but then I, I guess you look at the the age profile of the squad you look at the likes of Jacques Nian Aber coming in you know if you if you've world class defense coach coming in fixing maybe some of the, the small issues that are there you'd imagine the next year or two will still be very very prosperous years from Leicester's perspective they just need to get over the line in those finals yeah I don't I don't think the that group um, is going anywhere but it's just you know I'd f- like feel for them so much the pain the pain of losing the final is just incredible uh, it's it's brutal um, and you know it's everyone it's families it's, it's everyone who feels it um but you know the reason why it's so special to win and why it means so much is because it's so hard. And and mm-hmm. you look at um at, at La Rochelle and and their family and kids running the pitch and and Ron Agar and his mother and like those special moments live to forever. Um, and that's why you, that's why you play the game. But sometimes you have to go through a crazy amount of pain. And fortunately, the weekend was one of them. Um, to build your way up to, to finally get over the line and, and take the learnings from those really really hard days but it doesn't make them easy if, if, sorry Shane, if O'Gower did become the Ireland head coach in time is there any sense that he wouldn't be able to be as good as an Ireland manager as a club manager does it matter at all like when you're not there necessarily day to day no um, I wouldn't think so anyway I, th- I think uh, the fundamentals um of how he's built uh, the culture within his team, I don't think that there's you know it's kind of like once you have the the blueprint for it, it'd be obviously uh, you know he's probably a harder job of getting all of the different cultures and and everything um, singing off the same hymn sheet and motivated. So um, no, I think he'd have absolutely no problem. Um, he'd probably excel as a as Ireland coach, but. We have a pretty good Ireland coach at, yeah. the, at this moment in time. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So does he yeah. keep building the. What, what does he do going forward now? Like, how long does he stay in France? Oh, God, yeah. I have no idea. But, like, if, if you're. If you're winning, you know why? Why stop? Why stop a good thing? Um, seems to like living over there. Seems to like the culture. Yeah, yeah. Like judging, judging from what he's saying. Anyway, he's uh, and what he's doing, mm. and, and clearly with, with that group of players, um, I don't see why he'd leave anytime soon. Mm. The um, I was reading the piece. I don't know if you, you saw it yesterday in the Irish Independent from Rory O'Connor, where he was talking about the, I guess that psychological side of everything as well and uh, there was an interesting line where he said Cullen might start by tearing down the images of past success that dominates the walls of their UCD base of diffusing the importance of the stars on the jersey because rather than be inspired the players looked like the enormity of what was on the table spooked them as the game went on like is there, there's all that talk about the fifth star and, and, and the psychology of winning and and was that was that in any way related to the second half performance or the enormity of what was about to happen as, as Rory says there no nothing to do with it <laughs> no like I, we, we talked about it earlier you know and like listen he's uh, that's his opinion and he's entitled to that opinion but I don't agree with it whatsoever um, like if that was the case they wouldn't have had that first half performance mm. because it would have been too big for them and it would have been they would have been in the shells and all this sort of thing the Irish Shell are an unbelievable side they're reigning champions you know they were always going to have a purple patch and their purple patch was just slightly better than ours and that's unfortunately all it is and that's like sounds like very general we've gone through the detail mostly of, of how they did it but um, like you can you know try come up with different reasons and ways and everything like that like the the fifth star things it's just it's a, like it's a phrase there's no like you know mad thing about it every day like it's mm. not something that like we're it's not hammered o- home obsessed with yeah it's just like it's the next one that we can get so like that's what you know and we want to win a European Cup just as badly as everyone else so that's what we talk about because if it was the fourth one it'd be the fourth star mm. you know it's like it's it's uh, 
it's it's an interesting take on it and and listen he's entitled to whatever take he wants but I definitely uh, wouldn't agree with it is there any sense that they week to week they don't have many close games where like they're not really in this situation very often they're steamrolling teams week in week out much time then they obviously lose to Munster but this, this situation they're not in it very often and maybe is, is there a psychological thing when James Ryan goes off and they lose that like tribe for half time they're like we're not really used to this mental pressure or is that just just when they lost by a point Oh, yeah, I think genuinely, they I think it's just the ladder. They lost by a point. Lost by a point to an unbelievably good team. If they won by two, it's like, yeah, they won the game, mm. they deserve it. You know, yeah. They were the best final ever yeah, yeah. from a Leinster perspective. But, like, I'm sure all the people on the port are like, best final ever from <laughs> a large shell perspective. It's just worth sitting on this side. And, uh, and it's just, you know, like, everyone is entitled to their own take on it. And when you lose, you just got to sit there and take it. Mm-hmm. And that is just it. So, um, it's just tough what did you make of the, okay, we invariably t- talk about refereeing performances after after a final regardless I, know, I think Johnny Sexton maybe made a beeline for, for, for Jakob Piper after the match to, to have a couple of word, uh, words maybe on, on some of the decisions how did you feel he fared overall I yeah I wouldn't have any complaints um, like I feel like both teams um were were pushing the boundaries, you know, when it really mattered, and and uh, really competing hard at the breakdown, and um, yeah, I, I, I've I've no complaints. The, this conversation came up last night on on Monday Night Rugby. Where the question: Are Leinster overrated or underrated? And it's a mad one. It's like after all the success, and and you're seeing pieces in the newspapers talking about Leo Cullen is he all of a sudden under pressure to deliver the Champions Cup again next season you know 2018 is a, is a bit of time ago but not that long ago I guess but from a Leinster perspective with that star-studded squad is there pressure next I know there's pressure going into every season but is there added pressure now I wouldn't say it. yeah yeah potentially there, there is added pressure yeah no, yeah. there would be out of pressure but there's always pressure. It's like once you've once you've won uh, a couple and like the, like La Rochelle will have that same pressure now, you know, and uh, they are now the, the double champs. So like you know, everyone is expecting. You know, unless they win it next year, it's a it's a failure from their point of view. But the same expectation is is set in Ireland because we've been doing so well um, with you know the majority of these guys in green shirts, and we we've, we've uh, as a as a Lens team played well uh, throughout the year, and you know our expectations are to you know to to hopefully win a trophy at the end mm. of the year, and that's what we start out to do every year. So the pressure's on on us all the time. But uh, in ter- I suppose in terms of Leo Collins playing a coach career, where does this rank in terms of like stomach gut crunch? Like this is just tough, tough, tough to deal with. It's up there, yeah. But you know, Leo talks about the times when like they couldn't even get a win, mm. you know, and 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 uh, like the struggle that they had to go through then just to turn the team around, and the journey he's been on with the uh, with Lancers from donkeys years ago. Mm. Um, so it's this different. There's always there's always pressure and there's there's always scrutiny uh, when you don't win, and 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 rightly so. Mm. Um, but listen, this this team will will dust themselves off. It'll take you know weeks to kind of get over the the pain, and and it never leaves you the pain. But it'll take weeks to to to, to turn the page, and um, you know they'll go away and, and refresh. And, and mm. some lads will go uh, into preseason for the World Cup. Some lads will go into preseason for Leinster. And fortunately, you got to wait a year before you can try and and uh, and change change history. But um, it doesn't get any easier, unfortunately, because that La Rochelle team are probably going to get better. You know, the likes of Toulouse are probably going to get better. You know, everyone gets better. So um, that's the hard part. And, and uh, yeah, it's it's just tough. To I, am, I am actually struck by your use of the word pain as well, because a lot of people who are not into sport to be like, oh, he's waffling here. Like, it's just a game, you know. But obviously you mean it. Yeah, well, you pour your heart and soul into it. And, like, you know, if you were... Uh, I don't know if you're, you're at the game on the weekend like you look at the, the parents section on both sides and uh, like you know they're like that's your child and like the they're literally you know in tears for um, 
for grown men yeah for yeah. grown men and and they know because they pour the, the sacrifice that goes in and you, like everything you put into it and and listen that's you lose by a point you lose by a point but uh, you, you play it because it, you look at the the La Rochelle family and they're having the moments of their life and that's what you, that's what you play for so you just got to take the good with the bad unfortunately and uh, it does mean so much and I guarantee you would have seen the same pain from, from that La Rochelle team if uh, if we'd come up with, with two more points mm. or seven more points or five more points mm. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting year next year, and you even see the South African teams getting better as well and getting more financial firepower. So in every sense, rugby is just getting closer. So that gap between Leinster and the rest, uh, not just in this country but elsewhere, has clearly narrowed. Definitely, and I'm, I'm like unbelievably excited by uh, by how good, good and competitive the the URC is. Um, I think like there's there's some proper proper teams in there now, and like they're going to start kicking on in, in the uh, in the Champions Cup as well and, and it can only be a good thing having uh, having loads of class teams playing week in week out mm. it'll bring more viewership it'll bring better players um, it'll just raise the standard um, uh, yeah so I'm excited by all of that great stuff Jim's brilliant analysis and insight as per usual thanks William for popping in thanks Bill. great stuff Jim's Tracy there reflecting on Leinster's Heineken Champions Cup very narrow defeat to, to La Rochelle at the weekend